Okay, and welcome back. Uh, in the last video, we sliced our uh, 3D print job. And in this video, we're going to go through how to use the printer and actually print out your job for the first time. So once again, I've got it sliced here. It's all ready to go. I've verified this, uh, spent a great deal of time making sure this was a good slice. And I've got my SD card in my computer. Uh, as you can see here, Prusa Slicer is giving me the option to export directly to that SD card. So I'll click that and save the GCO file on my SD card. And then I'm ready to go to the printer. Just a few notes about the printers as we jump in here. Uh, first of all, the extruder and the motors can get very hot. The extruder is this uh, whole assembly here. And in the, in the middle, bottom of it, there's the hot end, which is hot. And there's a nozzle in the bottom of that, which the melted plastic filament is coming out of. And that's over 200 degrees. So you want to be careful reaching under there. Uh, use tweezers if you have to pull off any stray bits of plastic or anything. And of course the bed is moving back and forth and the extruder is moving back and forth. So there's a lot of pinch points. You want to keep these areas clear. Don't stick your fingers in between the moving parts. Don't let stray pieces of plastic get in there. Keep it clean underneath the bed and around the printer. Keep everything clean and uh, just be careful with the tools that we've provided for you. Okay. So we've already talked about the normal uh, print process. We had our CAD file. Uh, we sliced it. If uh, you're not a part of 206 and this is the first time slicing for 3D printing, uh, bring myself, Major Cooley, or Lieutenant Colonel Olmstead your saved 3MF file so we can check your slice before you actually try to print it for the first time, just so we can verify that you did it correctly. We've saved it to a SD card, starting with our last name, so that's clear. Um, and then we're going to load the filament in the printer. I'm going to walk through that with just the big picture though we load the filament insert the sd card print from sd we're going to watch the printer for through the first few layers uh, 3d printing is not a fire and forget process where we can just walk away and hope for the best it will be a disaster if you do that and then after the print job is done and it's cooled off we can take the part off uh, very carefully okay so that's just an overview of the process uh, for loading and unloading filament, to unload the filament we're going to preheat the printer because the, the plastic is actually melted into the nozzle. In order to unload it and get it out we need to heat it up so we can pull that plastic out. So we need to heat up the printer first. I'll show you how to do that. And then when we unload it we want to secure the loose end of the filament so it doesn't tangle up. To load the filament is just the reverse of unloading. We'll make sure that we're using PLA. We'll preheat the printer for PLA. We'll cut the tip of the filament to make a nice clean end. We'll put it in the extruder and feel those gears, grab it and pull it in. And when we see that color coming out the bottom of the nozzle, uh, we know it's been all loaded up. In terms of cleaning the printer, uh, we want to keep our fingerprints off of the steel sheets that are on the print bed. The fingerprint oils can prevent the uh, plastic from adhering to the bed and that can cause major print problems. So we want to use the tools like the spatula or scraper that's provided. Uh, and we want to only touch the edges of this to keep our fingerprints off of it. And if we do think that, you know, the um, fingerprints are an issue on it, then we can clean it off with uh, alcohol wipes. Okay. So before we print, we want to make sure we have a nice clean print bed. We want to make sure there's no plastic scraps around underneath the print bed or anything. And then after the printing, we want to leave a nice clean print bed for the next person and with no scraps around as well. Okay, the first layer that the printer prints out is the most important layer because this uh, will control how well the model sticks to the bed of the printer. And if it doesn't stick to the bed of the printer very well, it's going to come loose during the print and you're going to either end up with a rat's nest or a ball of goo uh, that's going to destroy the extruder on the printer. So we want to be very careful about the first layer. We'll go into more details here when we head to the printer. But basically, if we're too high off the print bed, then we'll end up with these round beads of plastic that aren't connected to each other, and they're not very well connected to the bed either. Uh, if we're too low, then the nozzle is pressed against the plate too much. This first layer of plastic's too thin. It's curling up around the edges in between the um, rows of filament, and we're not gonna have good adhesion here again. We want that nozzle to be right in the middle, uh, of, of those two extremes where we produce a nice flat first layer. E each uh, bead of filament is uh, touching full length the bead next to it 
So it's adhering to the plastic next to it, and it's adhering to the bed underneath of it. Okay. I'll show you how to manually adjust the height of this first layer. This is something that the uh, printer uh, can't do automatically. Uh, we have to manually calibrate the height of the first layer, and sometimes that calibration can change over time. And uh, we want to check this if we're having any problems with the first layer. We always want to check our first layers and make sure they look good. So I'll go over how to adjust that very carefully for you. Here's some more pictures of some first layer issues. Here's what it looks like when the nozzle's too high or too low. Um, and that's what it produces when the nozzle is too high. These uh, uh, strings of filament aren't adhering to each other or the bed because they're not getting pushed down against the bed. And when the nozzle is too low, we're not getting enough filament coming out in the extreme case, or it's curling up on the edges, as you can see here. And that's also causing adhesion problems. So we want the nozzle to be just the right height where it's uh, squishing down the plastic a little bit to get some good squish against the bed for that first layer uh, without being too high or too low. It's really easy to check your first layer. Uh, you can always stop your print job um, after the first layer, after a few layers, uh, scrape it off with a scraper, turn it over, and see what it looks like on the bottom. This print job here looked like it had a good first layer adhesion around the sides, but the middle here, there's definitely a problem uh, squishing that plastic down, and the nozzle is too high in this area here, and uh, this print had adhesion problems. Okay, so those are some of the things to watch out for for the first layer. I'll show you what that looks like in person. In terms of uh, what filament to use, if you're doing a print job for a class, uh, then use the filament that DFAN is providing for you. If you're doing a print job for your own personal uh, thing or printing out something for yourself, then you need to bring your own filament. Uh, we only can use 1.75 millimeter PLA. I'd recommend buying some Hatchbox off of Amazon or Persimmon if you want. And all the cadet filament is stored in these drawers over here. If there's unmarked filament over there, it's fair game. If you need to use it, just contribute some more unmarked filament to the drawer when you're all done. And the DFAN filament's in the bottom drawers here of our printing station. Okay, brief do's and don'ts. Clean up after yourself, obviously. Um, buy some PLA and contribute it if you're using unmarked PLA. Please, please let us know if you're not sure about anything. I'll come look over your shoulder and just make sure that uh, we're, you're not, print job's not going to be in trouble. Okay. If you see anything missing or damaged, obviously let us know. Don't just walk away from your print job. Watch it get started for the first several layers. Uh, it's best to do a print job if you're going to be around the area and can check on it every hour, or maybe in between classes or something like that. That's the best case scenario. Okay. Printing is not just a fire and forget process where you can just hope for the best. If you have a print job that you have printed multiple times before on the same printer with the same first layer calibration and you have high, high confidence of success, then that's a good instance where you could walk away from it after the first layer. Okay, but in general, we want to be checking on our print jobs as they print. Please ask us if you have any questions or concerns. Um, don't use the printers unless you've watched these videos and you've been signed off or gotten checked out for your first print job. Don't try to modify the printers or change anything without talking to us. Uh, don't use any Prusa printers except for the Prusa printers. I've seen some people try to plug into the printer with a USB cord and print over USB. Don't do it. Just use the SD card and finally help us to keep this resource for you guys by using it properly. Okay, and finally, please come find us if you have any questions. If something looks really wrong on the printer, like there's a rat's nest forming, or there's a death ball of uh, melted goo forming underneath the extruder, if you can shut it down smoothly, do so. Press the control knob, scroll down until you see stop print, and then stop the print. Or just hit this reset button here, and the printer will reset and stop, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, even if it's not your print job, if something obvious is wrong like that, just help us save our printers by stopping the print. If you have any troubleshooting questions about the quality of your print, like some of these advanced issues like stringing or oozing or the Z-seam or stuff like that, there's a lot of great Prusa resources out there, so Google those. And finally, come find myself, Major Cooley, or Lieutenant Colonel Olmstead with any questions. So with all that, let's head over to the printer.
Okay, and here we are with our Prusa i3 MK3S Plus printer, and we're ready to print out our octoprism that we've already sliced. So just a quick orientation to the printer. Uh, around back here on this side, I've got a toggle switch to power the printer on and off. This one's already on, and, and we usually just leave them on anyway. We've got the control knob here that doubles as a button, so I can spin this knob to select things and use it as a button. And I've got my reset X here, and I can press this reset button here, and the printer will reboot, and that's the fastest way to stop the printer in the case of an emergency or something like that. And just a reminder here that we've got a lot of moving parts. Uh, this bed can move back and forth. The extruder up here can move back and forth. And underneath the extruder is the hot end and the nozzle, and that can be very hot under there. So if we're reaching under there to get a piece of filament out, we'd want to use tweezers, uh, reach under there, grab the filament, and if we need to, to clean off the nozzle. Okay, and on our uh, screen here, we have the temperature of the nozzle up top and the temperature of the bed at the bottom. So right now the nozzle and the bed are both set to zero degrees and the actual temperature is room temperature right now. This printer uh, just finished another print job and so uh, this can happen frequently when you come to print something out and there's already something that's uh, finished printing and we need to clean this off in order to go ahead with our print. And we can lift this off and we want to uh, bend the sheet in order to break the bond between the plastic, but we want to do it in a way that keeps our fingerprints off the top of the sheet because we want to keep the top of the sheet nice and clean from fingerprints oils that will prevent the next layer from sticking as well as this one did. So the best way to bend it is to bend it up in the middle like this. That way our fingerprints are staying on the bottom of the sheet. And then we can carefully put the sheet back on the bed. And then we can just pull off the part for the most part. Um, that was finished on the print. There's, this model has some supports on it and we can just peel off these supports. If we need to, we can use a pair of pliers here and grab the supports and twist them off with the pliers and usually the supports pop right off uh, just like that. So we'll just set this print to the side for whoever printed it, they can come print it up. And we need to finish cleaning up the bed of the printer here. There's still some plastic that's stuck to the bed so I'll just grab the scraper and gently scrape around the bed, take off these pieces of plastic and we can throw them in the trash. And there's also a piece of plastic along the front here that's from the nozzle priming itself and we want to get that off of there too so the next time the printer starts it can prime the nozzle just like it needs to. So now uh, I've got the bed of the printer clean, cleaned off and I want to go ahead and change the filament so I can put in my own filament or the color that I want to print with. And in order to get the filament out of the nozzle, we've got to uh, preheat the nozzle and the hot end to warm up that plastic so we can pull it out. Because right now it's down inside of there and it's cold and it's solid and it won't come out. So in order to preheat the printer, I need to know what temperature I want to preheat it to. So I need to grab the roll of filament and I need to look at what kind of plastic I'm dealing with. And right here I've got uh, PLA, so I need to preheat the printer for PLA to the right temperature for PLA so I can remove the PLA from the nozzle. And so I'm going to click here and go down to preheat and then select PLA. And now the printer is going to go ahead and get up to that set point temperature of 215 degrees. Okay, and while that's preheating, I just want to show you a couple other things. First, I want to make sure that you see what a roll of pet G looks like. This is the other type of material that can be on these printers in the lab, and it's a lot different than PLA. It prints at 250 degrees instead of around uh, 215. And uh, if this is in the printer, then we would have to preheat the printer for pet G in order to unload it. So we'd have to press the button, preheat, and select pet. It just shows up as pet here. And now the set point is 230 degrees, which is the minimum temperature to get this out of the nozzle. But in our case, we've got PLA in the nozzle, so I'm just going to preheat, preheat for PLA. If I needed to turn off the preheating, I could also come down to the bottom and say cool down uh, if I needed to. But right now I'm just going to preheat for PLA to be able to get the PLA out of the nozzle. Okay. Uh, the other thing I wanted to point out real quick is this test piece that I did for testing uh, different overhangs without supports, okay? So what I've got here is an object that I printed with a 0.2 millimeter layer height and a 0.15 millimeter layer height. 
and I've got these pegs that I extruded out one millimeters, two millimeters, three millimeters, and four millimeters. And you can see when I have a four millimeter uh, peg that it sticks out without any support, it, the bottom really starts to have some poor quality. The plastic was drooping down as it was trying to extrude that out in both of the layer heights that I used. Uh, same kind of thing for three millimeters sticking out, but two millimeters and one millimeters of an extrusion with no support actually printed fairly decently. Uh, so that's why I'm able to print my Octoprism with the letters sticking out two millimeters fairly confidently. Okay, so now we're at our uh, set point here of 250 degrees, 215 degrees. So I'm ready to unload the uh, PLA. So I'll press the button again and I'll scroll down until I find the option to unload the filament. I'll press the unload button and now the gears will automatically push the filament back up and I can simply grab it out of this hole and secure it. I don't want this to be floating around loose because it could get tangled up in the roll of filament and cause a big problem for the next print job. So I'm going to secure that nicely on the side of the spool and now I'm ready to uh, load my filament that I want to print with. I'm going to take off this uh, bronze color and put on this blue. I really like this blue filament. So. When I load the filament in, I want to make sure that it has a nice clean end to the filament, okay? So this one already does, but just to demonstrate the point, uh, normally what I'll do is I'll use a piece of uh, a pair of clippers and I'll clip off the end of the filament so we have a nice clean filament that's at an angle. And now I'll insert this filament right into the hole where I took the other filament out, right on the top of the extruder here. And the printer will automatically sense the filament coming in. It'll grab it with the gears and it'll start to push that filament through until it starts to ooze out of the hot end underneath. And now you can see it oozing out. It's actually still the old color. There is some of that old color remaining in the nozzle. And I should start to see the blue color come out. I actually don't see any blue right now. So I'm going to answer this question and say no on the printer. I don't see it extruding with the correct color. And now it's going to push out some more filament. And now I start to see the blue color coming out. So I know that the change was successful, so I'll hit yes. And now I'll use my tweezers to grab close to the nozzle under here and get rid of this uh, waste piece of filament right there. So I've got my new filament loaded up. It's PLA. And uh, now I want to make sure that the bed is uh, clean and ready for printing. I already scraped off all of the old plastic that was on the bed. Sometimes uh, people touch the beds with their fingerprints, which you should, you should try not to do. You should only touch the edges of the sheet. But sometimes fingerprint oil does get on there, and so sometimes it's good to clean the bed with an alcohol pad. And so if I just open one of these, and it's pre-moistened with isopropyl alcohol, and I can just wet, wipe the bed with this uh, alcohol wipe to get rid of some of those fingerprint oils. You don't want to do this too often. You don't need to do it every print. It actually wears down the plastic coating that's on the steel sheet here. Uh, so you only want to do it if it's a problem, if the prints aren't sticking to the bed and you've tried everything else and still don't have any luck getting it to stick to the bed. Okay, so I've cleaned the bed off. I've made sure that there's no uh, plastic underneath the bed that could get caught up in the belts um, or anything. Uh, so everything's clear. Uh, so now I'm ready to go ahead and start my print job. Uh, the SD card is located over here on the left side. Hopefully you've already taken it out, put it in your computer, and put your G card on the S your G code on the SD card. I can insert the SD card back in the printer. When I do that, it automatically pops up with the uh, list of files on the SD card to print. And I can scroll down and find uh, my file. The, it sorts them by date, so the most recent file is usually at the top underneath the, any folders on the SD card. And here I can see that this is my file. It's got my last name. It was sliced for PLA on the MK3S. Uh, so I'm ready to go ahead and start this print. Before I do that, though, I want to say uh, one more word about uh, the first layers. Okay. Again, we talked about how important the first layer is, and we can manually uh, adjust the height of the nozzle to make sure that we're getting a good first layer, uh, like you see over there, that's not uh, too high and not too low, okay? Um, 
And I've got some parts here that demonstrate some of those different, what those different first layers look like. You can always pick up your part off the printer afterwards and take a look at the bottom to see how the first layer came out. So in this case, on this castle, I've got a pretty nice first layer here in the middle of the print, but you can see some gaps in the rows of filaments around the edge. And that means the nozzle was too high around there. So I actually, you know, probably could come back and lower this nozzle a tiny bit to get better first layer quality on that object. Uh, here I've got uh, half of an airplane and you can see the first layer here was actually pretty rough, okay? A lot of inconsistency on the inside of the model. And to get this one to stick down, I actually used a brim. So this piece of plastic on the outside of the model is the brim. And after we're done printing it, you can just peel off this brim because you don't need it anymore. Uh, but that gave me the extra adhesion I needed to keep that object down um, on the printer. Uh, here's a print job where I just stopped it after the first layer and peeled off the first layer with the scraper just to take a look at it. It feels really rough. There's a lot of ridges here, which tells me the nozzle was too close to the bed. And there's some gaps in this first layer as well, uh, which tells me that the nozzle was too close to the bed as well. So this is a first layer that was way too thin. Um, and I'd want to watch out for that. I've got an example here actually from the first layer of an octoprism. And if I look at the bottom of the first layer, I can see on this side over here, the nozzle was definitely too high over here. I can see how these, uh, this, this filament over here wasn't squished down on the bed, whereas over here on this side, it was squished down nice and flat. So this is what I want my first layer to look like, not like this uh, over here. Uh, and finally, here's an example of what can happen if uh, it doesn't uh, stick down to the bed well enough, okay? So first of all, if I look at this first layer, it looks like there was a couple stray pieces of plastic that got caught up by the nozzle and, and uh, stuck underneath the first layer. That's definitely gonna affect the first layer. Over here in this corner, it uh, didn't even stick to the first layer over here. It peeled up and that's really bad. And then if I put a, a straight edge against this object, I can actually see that that first layer was not uh, level on the bed. It peeled off the bed a little bit. Uh, and as, that, as it's peeling off, it warps the rest of the print. And that can uh, ruin the print or the print can come off the bed as well. So some of, those are some of the things we want to watch out for here as we watch the first layer of the object print. So um, I lost the menu to start my print. So I'm going to press the button again. I'm going to go down to print from SD. I'm going to go down to find my file and I'm going to start my print. Okay, and the printer's initializing here and the first thing it's going to do is go around and measure the height of the bed at nine different locations so it can try to automatically adjust the height of the first layer by itself, but sometimes we still have to manually help. Okay, so those are some of the things we want to watch out for here as we watch the printer start the first layer of the print. Now I lost the uh, SD card menu here to start my print. That's okay, I want to show you some other things in the menu anyway. Um, of course, we talked about preheat, we talked about print from SD. Um, it's always going to be on auto load filament. We talked about unloading the filament. There's a settings menu, menu here, and this is where I can manually control uh, the temperature of the nozzle or the bed if I needed to. I can also move the axes of the printer around. So I can move the Z-axis and bring the extruder down manually if I wanted to. Uh, or I can move the X or Y axis to move it around as I needed to. And there's some other uh, things in here that in general you shouldn't uh, mess around with, okay? I'm gonna go back up to the main menu here 
and I'm going to select print from SD and I'm going to find my octoprism and I'm going to press the button to start the print. Now it comes up here with a warning because the firmware of the printer is out of date. There's a new version that's available now and it recognizes that because the slicer uh, told the printer in the G code what the latest version of the firmware available is. Uh, so I need to upgrade the firmware on this printer, but for now I'm going to press the button to continue uh, with the print. And so it's making sure that the, the bed and the nozzle are warmed up to the right temperature. And now the printer is going to go through its uh, initialization routine. So now it's measuring the height of the bed at nine different points across the bed. And it's going to use these measurements of the height of the bed to try to automatically correct the offset for the first layer to produce a nice even offset across the bed. What can happen sometimes is we can end up with a piece of filament under the steel sheet that could cause an imperfection in the levelness of the bed. And that'll help correct for that. So it just primed the nozzle. It put out a, a bead of filament right here to get the nozzle flowing. And now it's drawing the skirt uh, uh, around the part. And then it's gonna start to fill in the first layer of the part. Um, and I wanna show you the menu here to adjust the height of the first layer. And now that the printer's printing, we have different menu options. We have a pause print and a stop print, uh, most importantly. We also have this live adjust C that appears during the first layer. And if I needed to, I could make small adjustments to the height of the first layer here. So I want to take a look at the height of this first layer and I want to get a nice close look at it and show you on the camera. So I'm actually going to go back out and I'm going to pause the print. And when I pause the print, the print head will just move to the side and it will start to cool down. Okay, so here's a close up of the first layer. And the part that's printed out right now is just the uh, underlayment of the supports. So it actually hasn't started printing the octoprism part. So I'm going to let it keep going a little bit and on the octoprism part and then take another look at the height of this first layer. Okay so here's another shot after it's finished uh, part of the actual octoprism and I can see this first layer um, has some imperfections to it. It has some roughness to it and I think that's because the nozzle is too close to the bed and uh, looking at the part where it printed underneath the supports it's a little bit too flat right there. So I'm going to resume the print and I'm going to come out here and raise up the height of the first layer a little bit by probably half of one tenth of a millimeter. Okay, and I'm going to let the printer keep printing the other side of the octoprism and then I'm going to check out that uh, first layer again by pausing the printer. Okay, so here you can see it's printed a little bit more of the first layer here on this side after I raised up the uh, that first layer adjustment. And this looks a little bit smoother than this area over here. So I think that was a good adjustment to the height of the first layer. So I'm going to let it continue the rest of the print with uh, this first layer height. Okay, so I'm satisfied with the height of the first layer after I made that adjustment to raise up the nozzle a little bit. So now I'm going to resume the print just by pressing the control button going down to resume print and now it'll heat the nozzle back up to temperature and pick right up where it left off. Okay, so now I'm underway here on the second layer, and the way I can tell is uh, it tells me what Z height it's on here, and now I'm on the Z height of 0.4, and I had a layer height of 0.2, so I know this is the second layer here, uh, so now I'm off to the races. I definitely still want to watch the print for the first several layers and make sure I don't encounter any other problems. The print head and the nozzle are still very low to the bed, so if there's a piece of stray plastic that's sticking up accidentally, it could catch it and peel up part of the first print. That's another common problem. And I definitely want to watch out for that. I also want to pay attention to my time remaining here. It's two hours and seven minutes remaining. So I'm going to watch it for the first several layers, and then I'm going to make a note of what time the print's going to be done so I can definitely come back and get it when it's done. But uh, in general, you want to be checking on it throughout the print too. So especially for your first print, try to stay around the lab and check on it every half hour or hour.
Okay, so my print's coming along nicely. Uh, it's uh, made it 11 millimeters high here at the, at the uh, Z coordinate there. So I'm gonna pause it and take a look at uh, how it's doing. And I can see the infill pattern. I can see the support. I wanna keep an eye on these supports. Sometimes these supports fall over while they're building and support looks nice and strong. The infill looks good and everything like that. So uh, at this point, I'm gonna resume the print and could uh, probably walk away from this one pretty safely. It's off to a good start. One thing that I do want to note here is this uh, speed here that says 100%. Right now the printer is printing at 100% speed. I can actually tune that if I wanted to. I could come down here into the tune menu and go to speed here and I could bump it up to 110%. Sometimes with a really simple print like this that has a grid infill, I could go as high as 120. Uh, I wouldn't go any higher than that really. Uh, all that does is apply a scaling factor to how fast the print is going and that's going to reduce the time remaining. Um, I really would urge against uh, using that as a matter of habit, and, you know, only if you absolutely need to. The only reason I uh, bring it up is because sometimes the um, print speed scaling factor will remain in the printer from a previous print, and if you just hit print without noticing this number here, your print may be going at 120% speed, which may affect the quality of the print. So if you do notice a different speed there, you'd want to come into the tune menu and bring it back down to 100% speed, okay, and leave it like that. So when the next print job started, it starts at 100% speed as well. Okay, and uh, here's my Octoprism, all finished after uh, two hours and 12 minutes of printing. Uh, the bed is still very warm and the nozzle is still hot, obviously. If I want to speed up the cooling off process, I can just lift up the sheet and kind of just attach it here to the outside. That'll speed up the cooling a little bit, but we'll just get a preview of what the Octoprism looks like here. I can see that support tower worked out very well for that uh, one peg that was sticking out quite a bit. The other ones that are only sticking out two millimeters uh, really didn't need any support at all. The letters turned out just fine. The F16 turned out just fine. And uh, the debossed 2004 also turned out just fine with the overhangs inside of it. Uh, the print quality looks smooth. I'm pretty happy about that. I'm gonna let it cool off for a little bit and we'll take it off of the plate. Okay, so it's cooled off a bit. I'm going to just bend the steel sheet gently. I can hear the object um, separating a little bit, the plastic uh, cracking off the bed. I'm gonna just grab the octoprism and pull it off. Now I need to uh, get rid of these supports here. So I'm gonna use my pair of pliers and just gently peel off those supports. I need to get rid of the supports on the inside so I can just reach inside with my pliers and try to pull off the supports inside and it's really just a matter of grabbing them tight enough with the pliers to pull them off. Okay, so here's my octoprism and I'm going to take a look at the bottom here. I really liked how this uh, interior kind of curvature turned out. I think that looks uh, pretty nice. I want to take a nice close look at the first layer here and see how I did with my first layer calibration and the first layer looks pretty smooth for the most part, okay? Uh, it looks like there's some inconsistency over here, but otherwise it looks like I had really nice uh, kind of adhesion between that first layer and the print bed, so I like that first layer calibration setting. I'm going to leave that how it was, and I like how the letters turned out, the pegs, the numbers, I think it all turned out great. So. And the last thing that I have to do is clean up the um, bed and get it ready for the next person who wants to print. So I'm going to use the scraper, scrape off all these bits of plastic that are still on the bed. I'm going to throw them in the trash so they're not just hanging around the print area. Um, I lifted the sheet off the bed quite a bit. So I'm going to lift it off and blow off this. We don't want to have any uh, stray pieces of plastic underneath the sheet because if there was a piece of plastic underneath the sheet when I put the sheet back on, it's going to cause an imperfection 
in the uh, levelness of the sheet. And that's going to be a real issue when the 3D print starts. So I'm leaving the printer nice and clean uh, for the next people that need to use it. And I'll see you in class.